Hi, and thank you for watching this video. My name is Marvin Munzu. I'm the clinical director of Pre-Red Shortcuts. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about important BNF and MHRA updates. And the reason why this is important is because these updates will help you to provide effective healthcare. It will also help if you are a trainee pharmacist. So um, who is this video for? So if you are a healthcare professional, so you're looking at if you're a pharmacist, foundation year pharmacist or trainee pharmacist, a pharmacy student, a nurse, a nursing student, a doctor, or a medical student. So, and if you use the BNF, this will be very important for you to stay up to date. So what we're gonna cover, I've tried to make this so simple, four key areas that we're gonna to cover today. The first one we're gonna look at are the updated guidances. And the reason why this is so important is because the current BNF or the most recent hard copy, the print version, which is BNF 82, September 2021 to March 2022, which is our most recent hard copy, which many pharmacies still use and you see there are many pharmacies. This um, hard copy, this print version has had some updates after its release. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the things that have been updated from say um, September or from August, September, after the release of the current BNF 82. We're gonna look at those changes after the release of this new BNF. We're gonna look at new preparations that have happened after the release of BNF 82. And then also some important MHRA updates um, that happened last year, so between January to December, which um, are important for you to know. What we wouldn't cover are COVID updates and also antiviral changes and updates. Simple reason is because there are so many updates and they keep changing all the time. So um, this video doesn't cover COVID or antiviral changes or updates. So I'll just repeat the reason why this is important. If you're asking yourself, why is this video very important? Um, it'll help you to stay up to date if you're a healthcare professional with the changes that have happened recently after the release of BNF 82. And if you are a trainee pharmacist, it is also gonna help you prepare for your exam as some of these changes are likely to come up in your GPC registration exam. So before I start, just um, for more information, if you are interested in getting more information, you wanna watch more clinical videos, then you could go to our YouTube channel, which is Previous Shortcuts. Um, you could visit our website, which is www.previousshortcuts.com. You could book a free call and speak to any of any member of the team, or you could email us, or you could follow us on LinkedIn and Instagram at Previous Shortcuts. So let's dive straight in. This is going to be a video that's going to cover quite a lot of important and probably some detailed information. So let's go straight into the updated guidances, which is the first part we're going to look at. So this is after the release of BNF82, which is your current red BNF. Um, there's been an update in the treatment and the management of acne. So if you are going to do anything on acne or if you're gonna treat anyone or provide any advice or if you're a trainee pharmacist and you need to do some revision, make sure that you use the online BNF to learn about acne and to use that information rather than the current BNF 82. Nausea and labyrinth disorders, we cover, we've been covering this to our, our combo course. Um, there's been an update, so if you look in your BNF82 on page 452, the um, antiemetics that are mentioned there that um, are sort of safe, the management of pregnancy, are your propylopyrazine, promethazine, hydrochloride, and metoclopramide. On the online BNF, which has been updated recently, they have added a few more um, drugs, cyclozine, promethazine, theoclate, ondansetrone and doxylamine with pyridoxin. So these have been added. So it's no longer what we had on our combo course, which is our PPM, which is procopyrazine, promethazine, and metoclopramide. They've now also added these other ones, which are also safe in pregnancy. Type one diabetes, very important endocrine system. Chapter six of your BNF, high weighting area. Um, so type 1 diabetes, there's been an update in the guidelines in your recommended insulin regimen. So previously, or if you look into BNF 82, your current BNF page 727, the um, 
insulins that are used for long acting in this regimen are your insulin glargin or your insulin detamine. But um, recently they have added a new one, which is your insulin degludec. So this has also been added and can be used as a long acting insulin um, for your insulin regimen. ACS, acute coronary syndrome, page 229 of BNF82. There has been an update in this section of the BNF. So again, if you're going to learn on ACS, which we cover in detail on the course as well, um, make sure that you do not use BNF82, but you go onto your online BNF to get the most recent updates on ACS. Next um, guidance is we're going to look at adrenal insufficiency, BNF page 714, your BNF82. If you go to that page, you will see that the title has changed. So previously or in the BNF82, th there's been an update in this area under management and it is, not, it is titled corticosteroid replacement therapy. This has now been changed. In the online BNF, so it's been changed after the release of BNF82 to adrenal insufficiency. And the guidance has been updated as well. So again, if you're going to learn about um, this area, corticosteroids replacement therapy, which is now adrenal insufficiency, make sure that you use the online BNF. Antihistamines, allergen, um, allergic emergencies, page 295 of the BNF82. There has been a change, this is very important, could come up um, in, in a registration assessment or just in practice is worth learning this. So change in the management of, of anaphylaxis and allergic emergencies. There has been a change in this management. On the page as well, you will see on page um, 295, there is a table. And the table shows you different doses of intramuscular um, epinephrine for emergency treatment of anaphylaxis. That table and doses have changed as well. So look, look at that. Look at the online BNF and make sure that you're using um, the right information. Contraceptive interactions. Every single year, there is an update in the BNF on the contraceptions, emergency hormonal contraceptions. So... Um, also, BNF 82, page 843, there is a section that talks about antibacterials that do not induce liver enzymes and also hormonal emergency contraception interactions. So there has been an update in this area on your online BNF. So again, do not use this information as your most up-to-date information from your BNF 82. The most up-to-date information is online. And um, there hasn't been a big change. But um, there's been a bit of information that has been added from the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare, so FSRH. So it's worth just looking at the online version and seeing um, the update that has, that has been added. Um, dapagliflozin. So with dapagliflozin, there's been an update of the use of this drug in renal impairment. So um, previously, and also a new indication which is um, in the treatment of um, chronic kidney disease. So it's worth definitely knowing this, um, update in renal impairment and also an addition of a new indication with CKD. So if you look into BNF82, it says you should avoid using this medication. Um, you should avoid initiating this medication if the EGFR is less than 60 and you need to avoid it if it's persistently below 45. So that's your BNF82. However, that has changed online. It has been an update after that, which says avoid initiation if EGFR is now less than 15. Also, when it's used for type 1 and type 2 diabetes, consider adding um, an, um, an anti-diabetic drug with dapagliflozin if the EGFR is less than 45. So again, please learn this. Um, you do get a lot of questions, especially in the GPH exam, on the endocrine system, on diabetes, and also if you're practicing um, as a healthcare professional, you'll definitely um, be managing a lot of diabetic patients. It's worth um, making sure that you're up to date with this information. Um, speaking along the lines of diabetes, Diabetic hyperglycemic emergencies. So BNF82, page 731. There has been another title change 
what we always learned as diabetic ketoacidosis that has now been changed to diabetic hyperglycemic emergencies and the guidance on the management of um, diabetic hyperglycemic emergencies which should be your diabetic ketoacidosis has also been updated um, after the release of BNF82. Eczema updated um, guidance on the types and management of infection. So if you look at your BNF page 1292, um, there is um, a short course of antibiotics, your fluoxacillin that's used as first line and then erythromycin as alternative. So these are given in BNF 82, page 1292. This has now been taken off. These um, antibiotics are no longer online. They've literally taken off fluclox. They have taken off erythromycin, but instead you're now referred to chapter five of the BNF, looking at antibacterial, the antibacterial therapy section. So those two drugs, which were first line there and the alternative have been removed from um, the updated version. Emergency contraception, there's also been an update on this online. So you want to, rather than use the BNF82, you want to use the online version for your emergency contraception updates. Um, GI system infections, antibacterial, um, clostridium difficile infection, BNF82 page 539. If you go on to page 539 and previously, Oral metronidazole was normally your first line for C. difficile. This has now been updated. It has been changed to oral vancomycin instead. So again, um, online BNF, if you're looking into the treatment of C. difficile, not your BNF 82. Heavy menstrual bleedings, um, menorrhagia. So this again has been updated. Um, generally, it is still the same in terms of what medications you can use for heavy bleeding but um bnf page um 798 to 799 but the new addition after this bnf 82 um is ulipristal acetate so ulipristal acetate has now been added as an additional drug treatment in the management of heavy menstrual bleeding Immunization schedules are always updated every single year, especially influenza vaccine, and this year hasn't been different. So there has been an update in the immune, immune, immunization schedule. Immunization schedule. There's been an update, um, influenza vaccine. So if you look at your BNF 82, if you look at influenza vaccine, um, it used to state 2 to 11 years old um, 2 to 11 years on the 31st of August 2020, including children in reception and school to 1 to 7. Now, it's been updated on your online BNF. Instead of 2 to 11 years, it is 2 to 15 years on 31st of August 2021, including children in reception class and schools years 1 to 11. So it's no longer years 1 to 7. It is years 1 to 11 and it's no longer 2 to 11 years. It is 2 to 15 years. So next one we'll look at is low back pain and sciatica. That has also been updated um, on in your current online BNF. So again, if you're going to learn about low back pain and sciatica, you're going to make some notes. Use the online BNF rather than BNF 82. Oral anticoagulants. This is so important. You do get a lot of questions in your exam on your oral anticoagulants, especially your DOAX, especially your DOAX, your direct acting oral anticoagulants on BNF, um, in BNF 82, page 131. There has been a change in the, the guidance. What is, it looks a lot better now because a few sections have been added. So indications have been added, monitoring and hemorrhage. These are sections that have been added and specifically on your DOAX, your direct acting oral anticoagulant. So again, it's worth um, looking at your BNF82 and then looking at the online BNF and seeing the change that has happened. Another one are your, um, your oral retinoid medicines. So example, isotretinoin. So there's a temporary monitoring advice during the COVID pandemic, which is more of an MHRA advice for these medications. 
Next one we'll look at are your topical corticosteroids. So there's an information on the risk of topical steroid withdrawal reactions. So these are all um, MHRA advices. Um, rarely long-term continuous or inappropriate use of topical corticosteroids, particularly those of moderate to high potency, can result in the development of rebound flares reported as dermatitis with intense redness, stinging and, and burning that can spread beyond the initial treatment area. So that's an update with your topical corticosteroids, especially those of moderate to high potency. Pain and chronic well chronic pain updated guidance on the management of pain um not really much of an update apart from the fact that if you go onto your bnf 82 page 464 to 465 the online version has now added chronic primary pain which is not in bnf 82 also um, a section has been added for adjuvant analgesics and the section which is on B in BNF82, which mentions ca cannabis products, has now been removed from the non-opioid analgesics. So again, if you're going to look at pain and management of pain, it's um, worth using your online BNF as opposed to BNF82. Prescribing renal impairment, BNF82, page two, page 23, and update again to the guidance, and this time there's been an addition um, of more information, including acute kidney injury in the online BNF. Let's look at those changes. Um, with your dose changes after the release of BNF 82, vancomycin, as I mentioned earlier, for the treatment of C. difficile, the dose has been updated. And um, it's now first line as opposed to metronidazole. Um, chloral hydrates, update to the dosing information for short term of severe insomnia. And then as I mentioned, um, with your epinephrine or adrenaline um, for the treatment of acute anaphylaxis, that table has been updated with doses as well. Then Peram panel, which is um, an anti-epileptic, there's been an update to include dosing in children from four years old for treatment of focal seizures and from seven years old for primary generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Um, new preparations, not too many for you to learn, but at least um, when it comes to the respiratory system, I think it's quite important that you learn um, your new preparation. So Trimbo Next Haler 8859, that's a new preparation. You've got Fixed Core Air Master and then Ari Case Liposomal Nebulizer Dispersion. So these are our new preparations that have been put in um, into the BNF after the release of BNF 82. So you wouldn't have that in your hard copies. So let's look at um, some important MHRA updates. These are so important and um, they generally get tested. And there's a high chance that they will get tested for training pharmacies in the exam. While again, if you're um, a healthcare professional, then this will be useful for you as well. So let's look at some of the MHRA important MHRA and drug safety. So anti-epileptic drugs, as most of you know, are normally teratogenic. However, um, there's been some research that has been done of late, so there's now some updated advice following com a comprehensive safety review. So in your BNF, page 325, so MHRA update, Lamotrigine and Levetiracetam are considered the safer anti-epileptics to use for pregnant ladies. So um, the most unsafe is your sodium vaporate, but if um, a pregnant lady was going to take an anti-epileptic, if she has to take an anti-epileptic, then the two L's, which are lamotrigine and levetiracetam, have been shown to be the safer ones of the anti-epileptics. Fingolimod um, is updated advice as well about the risk of serious liver injury with this drug. It's been newly added to your BNF 82, page 904. So these are um, things that have been added to the BNF 82. So these are actually in 
your BNF82 that we probably added this year. Um, SSRI and SNRI antidepressants. So um, in your BNF82, that's been an addition to this BNF. So this is in your current BNF. But um, I'm just highlighting important MHRA updates that are in your current BNF. While the previous slides were looking at changes that are not in the current BNF. So important MHRA warnings or updates in the current BNF. Small increased risk of postpartum hemorrhage when used in the month before delivery. Also, with your aminoglycosides by injection, there's an increased risk of deafness in patients with mitochondrial mutations. That has been added, page 549 in your BNF82. Other updates that have happened um, that are present uh, in your BNF82 that are important for you to learn. Ulipristal acetate, specifically ESMIA, not LR1, ESMIA, 5 mg. Um, restrictions of this, with this medication due to the risk of serious liver injury. So you can find that information on page 853 of the BNF82. which is an antidote. And, um, and alpha. it has been shown recently that this drug um, interacts with heparin. So it um, reduces the effects of heparin. So the advice is to avoid andexanate alpha, which is normally used to reverse effects of um, rivaroxaban, apixaban. So this drug should not be given uh, with heparin because it neutralizes the effects of heparin. So that is on page 132 of BNF82. Quinolones, um, systemic and inhaled fluoroquinolones, so your quinolones are your antibiotics like your levofloxacins, your ciprofloxacins. So with these medications, there is a small risk of heart valve regurgitation. So if any patient has a history of maybe some heart problems, maybe hypertension or a pre-existing heart valve disease, then um, they need to avoid um, taking quinolones or at least monitored um, if effectively. So this information can be found on um, page 598 of the BNF82. Erythromycin, an update on known risk of infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. So this was an, this was an MHRA um, advice, which is literally a blockage for um, newborn babies. So a blockage in the intestines. And um, this is found on page 578. So um, the highest risk of this is in the first 14 days after birth. So if um, a child is having symptoms such as vomiting, then um, they need to seek medical advice. So um, erythromycin um, is worth learning that this um, any pregnant lady that takes erythromycin, say before birth, um, there's a risk that the child can um, could suffer from infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Um, erythromycin, again, another MHRA update that is in your BNF82 that's important to learn is the caution required due to cardiac risk. So erythromycin increases the risk of QT interval prolongation. So it needs to be avoided in patients with a history of QT prolongation. There's also an important interaction that has been highlighted and is an interaction between erythromycin and rivaroxaban. So um, these two drugs together um, increase the risk of rivaroxaban causing bleeding. So that's in the BNF page 82, print off page 578 in your BNF 82. Other drugs, bupropion hydrochloride, which is your Zyban. So there's a risk of serotonin syndrome with this drug. So we obviously cover signs of um, serotonin syndrome. So it just simply means that if you give this drug with any other serotogenic drug, for instance, your SSRIs, um, you have to either reduce the dose or you may have to discontinue this drug um, if you give it with another SSRI to avoid um, signs of serotonin syndrome. Modafinil. Increased risk of congenital malformations if used during pregnancy. Um, pregabalin, so Lyrica, um, there have been reports of um, severe respiratory depression with Lyrica. This is found on page 346 of your BNF82. 
Hydrocortisone alkin the brand. Um, there's a risk of acute adrenal insufficiency in children when switching from hydrocortisone tablet formulations to granules. Levothyroxine sodium. So, um, new prescribing advice for patients who experience symptoms on switching. So, if you're going to switch between different levothyrox um, levothyroxine products, then um, the advice is to stick to the same tablet if the patient is experiencing side effects or symptoms. So if they are, then you stick to the same tablet brand if you have any issues in switching um, the medications to say oral solutions. Okay, so if you have any issues with um, switching um, tablets, then um, you want to stick to the same tablet. But if you're still having issues with the tablets, then you can switch to an oral solution. So um, chloramphenicol eye drops containing borax or boric acid buffers. So previously, these were considered to be unsafe in children younger than two years old. So you wouldn't give them um, chloramphenicol um, containing borax or boric acid buffers. However, um, some st um, studies have been done to show that it is safe. So that restriction is um, no longer there, right? So previously restrictions on children younger than two years old because of maximum daily limits of boron exposure. So it is fine now to um, prescribe these to children younger than two years old because that safety concern um, is no longer there. So um, what I'm gonna do now is um, just very quickly, I'm gonna go through um, a few more updates i'm going to go through um january all the way to probably july so before you had your bnf before your bnf 82 i just want to highlight some important um important updates that um took place in the year for you so that at least you have all the updates of the whole year all the way to december so um quick one sumatriptan so there's been an update to the dosing for the treatment of acute migraine by subcutaneous injection so the OBNF, um, the initial dose was 6 mg for one dose followed by 6 mg after at least one hour. That has now been updated in your um, new BNF, your BNF 82 on page 506. The dose is now initially 3 to 6 mg, so it's no longer just 6 mg. It is 3 to 6 mg for one dose followed by 3 to 6 mg at least an hour. So it's worth learning this from your BNF 82, it is an update that happened in 2021. Now in February, so although I have this month, um, some of them were not precisely in this month, so don't really stick to the months when these changes were made. Um, the most important thing is to know that these changes were made around then. So um, liver glutide. So liver glutide, um, this new indication, which is managing overweight and obesity. So you could use liver glutide to manage um, overweight and obesity. But um, there are two brands you're looking at, Saxenda, that's the brand that is licensed for overweight and obesity, not the Victoza brand. This information can be found in your BNF82 on page 742. Rheumatoid arthritis, again, updated guidance on the management, page 1149 of your BNF. Um, it's changed from osteoarthritis and soft tissue disorders to just osteoarthritis. So worth looking at that to see the updates in this section. It, in March, we had um, updates um, up with erythromycin, so updated pregnancy statement. So previously, the um, advice, the pregnancy advice for erythromycin was it wasn't known to be harmful. That has now been changed to use only if potential benefits outweigh the risk this information can be found on page 578 of your bnf 82 um, your oral pharyngeal infections um, updated guidance on the management as well and um, changes have made to abscess and the pe um, periodontitis treatment section of your bnf which is on page 1270 um, the, the area with psychosis and related disorders, which is BNF 82, page 404, that has been updated, um, updated guidance on the management. Again, this was updated probably around March, this was March 2000, from the March 2017 version. That has been updated. Again, these are all in your BNF 82. So what is in your BNF 82? These are the updated versions 
um, that we are looking at now. Right, so um, skin infections, antibacterial therapy. So these are updates that have uh, been updated from the previous BNF. So BNF 81 or BNF 80. So up, um, BNF 80, um, again, updates skin infections, updated guidance for the management of human and animal bites. You can find this updated information on page 547. There's a lot more information on the, on the management of human and animal bites compared to BNF um, 80, for example. So um, glucagon as well, in March, we had an update for the dosing for the treatment of severe hypertension, heart failure, or cardiogenic shock due to acute overdosage of beta blockers. So that's been updated. Previously, it was just about beta blockers poisoning, but now there's, they've added more information and changes as well in the dosing for children and adults. You can see this, you get all this information on page 767. Rosuvastatin, so there's also been um, dose adjustments due to interactions. That area has been updated. So where you have the dose adjustments of rosuvastatin, that has been um, updated, changes with the doses with antivirals. So um, this update is on page 220 of your BNF82. Um, Dapagliflozin for treating symptomatic chronic heart failure, which is quite an important one with reduced ejection fraction. So by mouth, the adult dose is 10 milligrams once daily. You can find this information, BNF82 on page 747. So you could get the updated indication of dapagliflozin, which is for treating symptomatic chronic heart failure. Contraceptives and hormonal, you always get updates in the section. So updated guidance in line with your faculty of sexual and reproductive health care recommendations for progestogen only contraceptives. You can find that information again on page 840 of BNF82. Dose changes, dulaglutide, there's been an update to the dosing for the treatment of type 2 diabetes in combination with insulin and other anti diabetic drugs. In May, we had more updates on um, poisoning, emergency treatment, so new guidance. There's been a new guidance on the storage of specialist antidotes. And this has been added to the BNF in your BNF 82 on page 1430. You will see what the update is, which just um, is just by NHS England, which um, advises pharmacists to ensure that specialist antidotes are stored either in automatic dispensing cabinets or systems or in areas um, specifically designated for antidotes. Um, oxycodone hydrochloride there's been an update as well to include oral dosing in children from 12 years old for severe pain so also worth looking at oxycodone and seeing the updates um especially with the ages for children from 12 which wasn't that before um in june you had um other updates you had life support the life support algorithm um there's an image in the bnf that has been updated um, so worth looking at that as well in your BNF82. Prescribing in dental practice has also been updated. That section, if you look at the management of hypoglycemia, that has been updated. Um, polycystic ovary syndrome updated as well. Canagliflozin um, information has been updated in the renal impairment section. Um, Rabeprazole, esomeprazole, lanzoprazole, pantoprazole, all of these um, the information on breastfeeding has also been updated. So um, previously, um, in the previous BNFs, you had to avoid these drugs on um, breastfeeding because they were passed, um, they went into breast milk. So um, the advice was to avoid them. But now um, the advice is just cautious, um, just uh, be cautious about them. Omeprazole was generally all right. But with the other ones, you don't need to avoid them because um, they're now not shown to be harmful. So although you still need to be cautious, but it's no longer avoid because now it does. they haven't shown to be harmful in breast milk, although they do um, get into breast milk. Hypoglycemia, um, there's been an update in the guidance. Again, very important because you get lots of questions on hypoglycemia. Prescribing in dental practice, again, updates which I mentioned above um, with hypoglycemia. Glucose updates in the dosing. So it's worth definitely looking at hypoglycemia in your BNF 82. 
medical emergencies in the community um, dosing of hypoglycemia again so a lot of um, updates there on hypoglycemia naloxone update to the dosing of treatment for acute opioid overdosage in high and low dose regimens so the updates that happen around June June 2021 um, another one is um for July was orbit so um, previously we always use or uh, one of the most popular tools for measuring the risk of bleeding with patients with AF was the Hasbled um, as, as of July 2021 um, there's a new tool which is Orbit um, which can be used and is a more effective tool than Hasbled in, um, in determining the risk of bleeding for AF patients so that's it thank you very much for watching i hope this video has been helpful if it has been helpful please um feel free to like the video just to give me some feedback like this video if you found it useful please subscribe to our channel our previous shortcuts channel if you haven't yet um, share this link with friends with colleagues with other healthcare professionals with trainee pharmacies, anyone that you think may benefit from this information. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that this information will help you to provide a more efficient healthcare to your service users. And also, if you are preparing for your GPS exam, I wish you all the best and I sincerely hope that this information will help you succeed. Take care and I look forward to seeing all of you soon. Bye.